Stand up is the most like your nervous thing you could like. There's yeah, more... you would think that I'd be more <laughs> afraid to do stand up than like <laughs> acting or something else. Yeah, because stand up, it's you. Yeah, you know, it's just you, and it's yeah, you're vulnerable, and you're not hiding behind a character or singing someone else's words or or yeah. as your own. Yeah, you would. Yeah, you would think. I think that's why we're all a little, <laughs> little off because. If yeah, if I was gonna be afraid of anything, it should be this, you know. What I yeah. mean? <laughs> Getting up there alone and then trying to make people laugh, like a room full of strangers laugh, like Hi everyone, welcome back. This is season five of Shooting the Breeze. And this week my guest is Steve Bottomley. Steve is a is a comic and producer based out of Vancouver. And I was supposed to interview him two years ago, but we all know what happened. But he's gracious enough to still be interested to to appear, and he's my guest this week. So welcome, Steve. Thank you for coming. Great, so great to be on the show. Worth the wait, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so before we get started, can you let our listeners and viewers know where they can follow you and find you on social media? Yeah. On Instagram, I'm Mr. Bardo. M R B O T T O, awesome. and I'm on Facebook. Just uh, look for my name with a guy with a microphone. Okay. That's me. And I don't use Twitter very. I don't like Twitter, so I don't use it. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So I'll include I'll include your Instagram and and your Facebook in right. in the show Thank notes. You. So. Yeah, I'm on so YouTube. You, you, you are on YouTube. Page. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You find the same picture on YouTube. On there too. Okay. Is it under just your name? Uh, my name with and there's a picture and the microphone. There. Okay. Okay. I'll include that too for for oh, YouTube. Thanks. Excellent. So we've never met in person, but we've done. I know you did. Um, we met online during the uh, pandemic. Well, it was I can't remember which one it was. Yes, you were on one of my one of my online shows. Yes, yeah, so and I think. Either that's how we met or we had met, I think we had met on, on um, like somebody else's online show, perhaps. Oh, well, possibly, and then, yeah, I then I invited you onto my show. I think maybe that's how that maybe, happened, yes. but we've never met in person, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> only <true>. online. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> we probably will, you know. Oh, yeah, I'm, exactly. Uh, yeah, no, I'm going back east quite often. I wanted to go every year. I really okay. like the scene in Montreal. Yeah, Montreal has a great scene. Yeah. Yeah. I was just there uh over the weekend. So when you when you travel to Montreal, how do you sp spend a week, two weeks out here? Uh, when... Yeah, last time I spent a week. Okay. And it's at, at your is the purpose uh comedy or you have yeah, like business uh, and stuff I'm like that? For a comedy festival. Uh I don't know if I'm allowed to mention names here, but uh, it was somebody's comedy festival, and I, I I went on that, and I liked the venue, the uh, the Diving Bell Social Club. I think that's a great venue. So I wanted I've to. Never, uh, I've never been yeah. there, but I've heard good oh, things really? about it. Oh, it's yeah. great! You go well. At first, I was turned off because you go way up a long staircase. When I first saw that, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it was pretty creepy up there. But it's worth it. Uh, you go up there; it's a really big room and uh, good people, and it's, it's like there's a bar there, and uh, yeah. So, oh, that's so cool. yeah. So I liked that venue. I went up there, and um, then I went up on the at the Nest, which I think is probably one of the best clubs in the country. I, I don't know. I, I sort of had a dream of going up there, and I was I was put on there on one show, so I liked that. And to my surprise, there was a comedy contest that night as well. Oh, is that uh, the the one where they give you the theme, like the Wednesday yeah, night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's Wednesday, fun. Uh, lab the Wednesday, Wednesday. The uh, yeah, yeah, the uh, uh, comedy lab. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, uh, that one too. yeah, actually, a friend of mine from Vancouver had to be on that show, and he won it. Oh, cool. So that, was, that was interesting. Yeah. 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 And uh, awesome. I went up to the bar guy, which is a pretty good room. A room. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've been there or not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah, I plan to come back next year. And um, uh, there, someone's running. Am I allowed to mention names here? Or yeah, or sure. Not? Okay. Yeah. Well, Zach uh, Kick is running a show in uh, in in uh, the park, 
And I went and checked out his show, which I thought was pretty good. So I'm going to try to get on that one. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. And um, and Harrison uh, Weinreb is running yes, a show. Yes, I know Harrison. Dumpies. Yeah, I wanted to get on to that one. Too. So next time I'm going to try to get on to those. Okay. He's so funny. He is. So yeah, funny. he won the contest, actually. But I yeah. Was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's the, fir the very first time I saw him, I very first time I met him, and saw him like we were still wearing masks so this oh, would yeah. have been like september august september of 2020 uh -huh. and he went up with his mask but he had a harmonica oh really we didn't know and he just oh, breathed <laughs> and this harmonica sound <laughs> came out it was so funny yeah, <laughs> so i always funny. think of that when i whenever i hear his name i i think yeah. of that and it just cracks me up that he's very very talented yeah for sure very yeah. talented so how long have um how long have you been doing comedy since uh 2017 okay i started with the comedy class which uh probably true with a lot of people and then uh from there uh Actually, I didn't go too long before I started producing my own shows because I realized how many people were in it and it might be a long wait before I started getting onto shows. So, I, well, might as well start producing my own. I think a lot of people do that too. Yes, yes, yes. Make your own stage but, time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's good to do both. You know, I'm still available for other people's shows. And uh, mm. every now and then someone asks for, for that too. So right. it's good to have it both ways. Right. So what kind, like, um, so you're based in Vancouver. So is your show weekly, monthly? Like, well, what kind of show uh, is it? Because of COVID, uh, uh, venues are, you know, sort of, uh, we're collapsing. And the one, I, I had a main venue I was working at, uh, 2020 was actually a very good year for that. I produced 50 shows that year. In 2020? Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's a, that's. But uh, then I lost the room, and then the oh. next year it's just three shows, and uh, and uh, last year was three shows, and this year it looks like it's going to be about three shows because of the venue. Uh, and everyone has the same problem, you know. If there were a lot of venues, there'd be a lot more shows, but uh, mm -hmm. venues are few and far between. And if somebody has one venue, then you don't really want to, you know, crouch in on them kind of thing. Right. 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 Yeah. You don't want to do a, a show yeah. there as well. Yeah. Respect people's rooms and I want to leave that alone. So it's just uh eventually it'll come around, I'm sure, but it's yeah. just super well. But fifty in in twenty twenty, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. That was that's a great year. Yeah. yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Um what's the scene like in Vancouver? Oh uh, there's a lot of it's very popular. I don't know if it's probably even more popular than Montreal. There's a lot of people in it. Really? Here. Okay. It's, uh, I mean, I go to some open mics, there's like 50 people signed up, but the old Yuck Yucks that used to be here, there'd be actually 50 people signed up to go up. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, that, that closed down now. And, uh, but there's still, uh, still a few open mics here. You don't okay. see actually, uh, I think there just, there should be more open mics here. We need okay. more open mics. Are there, yeah. are there, so I know Yuck Yucks doesn't exist there anymore. Are there other? It does, but only in the casinos. Yeah, they moved to the casinos. Oh, they it's don't have a casino. Any... Okay, it's not a standalone building. No, it used to be. Okay. Are there other comedy clubs there, or is that the only one? Uh, it's mostly they're run in bar. Well, there is one, uh, Comedy After Dark, uh, run by Susie Rossum. I don't know if you've heard the name. No. But yeah, she... Uh, She's very good at producing shows, you know, um, and she gives a lot of people stage time. So, okay, and new people coming in, and she, so she's good. Uh, but it's sort of like a bar that she's made into a comedy club. Okay, uh, there is the House of Comedy in New Westminster, which is a comedy club for sure. Oh, okay, so, uh, okay. So um, I've never been to Vancouver, and I know oh, a few. Yeah, I've never been. I've never been out. Oh. I've never been out there. One day, I hope to get out there. Yeah, but please. I know. <laughs> I think over the yeah from about twenty twenty, I know of, I think three three or four comics who've, gone to Vancouver for. A couple went oh. for school. One is from there, and so she went back, 
Oh um, yeah. Yeah, I know three or four people who um who who've moved there with the, in the last three years. Oh yeah, I you see. Know? Yeah, yeah. Every now and then you get somebody Charles Daglian comes every now and then. I don't know. Okay. know, yeah, I, know name. I know the name. I know the name. Yeah. Comes every now and then from Montreal. He was on my show once. Oh, nice. That, that was good, yeah. I like to have outer towners, that's all. And most places mm -hmm. do like that. Outer towners. Right, because it's just some something yeah. uh, something different. Yeah. Yeah. And um, what I've what I've noticed with the pandemic is like since we we've, we've been doing we were doing shows online, we've made contacts in markets we wouldn't we might not have otherwise Oh, there's definitely an advantage to online. Yeah. Anyone in the world could be on the show. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. And then when we we're moving back to in person that you have a you have a contact in Toronto or you have a contact in New York or something. That's At least it. someone who could direct you to producers or shows and things like that. So yeah. That's Here's a good idea. Sure. Yeah. 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 Did there's you probably did always you... exist a little bit? You know, it's never going to be all back the other way. There'll always be the online thing, though. Know? Oh the yeah, but I think right? yeah, they're still. I know friends who are still, they're 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 performing live, uh -huh. but they they still they still do Zoom shows. Like they're still, yeah. um, weekly shows or whatever that are still happening. I, I, I know there's no yak yaks in Montreal. I don't know what the story is, but. Uh, for some reason they're not there i don't know yeah why. but it's not there but i i'm i'm not even sure like i, I, I grew up there and i'm trying to remember yeah. if there was a yuck yucks in my some kind of tragedy that happened or you i know? i oh. have no idea but i know at the time like when i was when i was growing up there there was the comedy nest and there Ooh. was another comedy club called the comedy works oh yeah i performed yeah. there once yeah and it burnt down apparently I, I I don't remember what happened. I think yes, it burnt down because it used to be on like Bishop or Mackay, yes. and then it moved to a hotel. Oh yeah, the okay. club moved to a hotel, and then I I don't oh. remember how many years it was there, but then it it's gone. So really, the old it's it's just like from back when I was a kid and growing up, it was uh, it's just Comedy Nest oh, there. But Montreal has so many different things. Actually, my I, picture that I was talking about was taken at the Comedy Works. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, oh wow. That's yeah, it was a nice. We got right near the sign. It was a nice uh, sort of place to take a picture. So that's what oh, I was doing. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, because I I remember the comedy works from like the nineties and eighties and nineties. Oh, was that um, long back? Yeah. I see. Yeah. Like I don't know when it. Um, I don't. I don't know when it closed down, but I remember going there in definitely in the nineties, like the mid to late nineties, okay. going. Let's see, I was there, performed there in 2018, I think. At the Comedy Works? Yeah. Oh, okay, so it might have, it's probably recently gone under then, because... Yeah, and just after that, it burnt down, is what I was told. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I was, for some reason, I was thinking that was earlier, but but I do remember going to shows, going to... Uh, uh, yeah, shows Sid, was running. Sid is the one who put me on there. Oh really? Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 I remember going with uh like on a date, going with a date there and they placed us oh, yeah. right in the front. Oh yeah. <laughs> right at the stage. <laughs> and we were so nervous that like we couldn't enjoy it because we were just looking down at the table and i remember looking up and like locked eyes with the comic and i guess he felt sorry for me and he didn't he left me alone he left us alone but we were so stressed out like you weren't like, a comic at the time then. no i wasn't a comic at the time i wanted to do it but i wasn't a comic at the time so yeah they don't pick on comics that's sort of a rule you don't pick on a comic that's sitting right right but no i wasn't a comic at the time this would have because i only I, I started in 2019 and this would have oh. been this was like mid 90s this would have been oh, like, that long ago. yeah see. this would have been like 92 93 or something like that oh, yeah, yeah. I see. <laughs> but yeah so yeah, we were fair game because we were sitting right in front, but we were left alone. They didn't think, I think we looked too scared. <laughs> we looked terrified. We're like, and, and wouldn't look. I just remember, I think that was the only time that I didn't enjoy myself right. at a comedy show because we were so stressed out 
to be sitting right in the front. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, a lot of people want to sit in the front. That's true. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. So, um, what? How, how did you get into? Uh, um, it's kind of a. It? Well, I'll tell you that the story is. Yeah, I was involved in a sort of an, an anti-war group. I still know them a little bit. Um, and they had a comic that was doing a, a, a fundraiser for them. And then, so I got to know her a bit. And um, her name's Katie, Katie Ellen Humphreys. And then, so I didn't see her for a while. And then another girl I knew wanted to go to a, a comedy show. So I said, okay. And she, uh, Katie Ellen was there performing. Oh, okay. I, said, hey, I know her. She used to do a, she did a fundraiser for us. And then I found out that she was doing a um, comedy class. I said, well, I'd, I'd love to get to take it. That would be great. And so through her, I took her class a few times and got into it. Oh, cool. And uh, I kind of felt, you know, like I hadn't been on stage since uh, acting in, in, in high school. I did some theater, even Shakespearean acting back then. But I didn't wasn't on the, sh the stage for a long time, and it felt great being back on there. And I think it was meant to be that I got back onto the stage, got back into it. So, oh, so you did like you did like theater in school and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I did, did yeah, a bit after school. Yeah, as well. Okay. Did okay. a bit of Shakespeare. Okay. I don't know. I got. Yeah, I, I did didn't. I did none of that. Oh, really? Like my sister was is the performer. I I never I didn't oh. do any plays or oh, really? the only oh. artistic thing I did in school was the Christmas like the choir at Christmas. Oh yeah, I see. that's that's it. But like plays and stuff like that, I didn't. Hmm. I, I it never interested me to oh, really? to do it. Yeah, so I have well, like really no performance the, background. Let's you into it. Um, it was just something I found fascinating and I wanted to do it from the time I was oh, about 15. Oh, I, I, see. I was too painfully shy and afraid. Oh, so you never had a desire to, to act or, or be like an improv or anything? Yeah? Okay. No, no. I like see. I knew I wanted to do stand up, but I was too shy, but I didn't. It's not like, oh, I'm too afraid to do stand up. I'm going to try acting or improv. I was just oh, like, I, I didn't do any of it i was too shy to do any of it actually um oh, so yeah. i only did it i only attempted it like 40 it's years just, later it's kind of funny I think, uh, stand up is the most like a nervous thing you could like there's yeah more... you would think that i'd be more <laughs> afraid to do stand up than like That's acting or something else <laughs> yeah because stand up it's you yeah, you know, it's just you, and it's ever, yeah, you're and vulnerable, and you know, yeah, you're people. not hiding behind a character or singing yeah. someone else's words, or or yeah. as your own. Yeah, you would, yeah, you would think. I think that's why we're all a little, <laughs> little off because if yeah, if I was going to be afraid of anything, it should be this. You know, what I yeah, mean, exactly. getting up there yeah. alone and then trying to make people laugh, like a room full of strangers laugh, like. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I just yeah, it's one of those things like when you've waited so long to do it cuz I was like 15 when I was like I want to do it and then I was 52 when I actually oh, really? did it. Oh, you know, really? and I was like I've got a lot of time. I got to make up for a lot of time, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. It's never too late. I mean, I think George Burns did, did it when he was 100 years old. They yeah. He was still doing stand up. <laughs> yeah, so yeah he was still doing it. And there are a lot of people who started <laughs> late in life, like in their 40s and 50s and oh, stuff. Sure. It's true. Oh. You know, so it's never too late. But it's uh sure. it's one of those things that um like I wish I knowing what I know now and how I feel about it now, I wish I had I wasn't so afraid and I had started sooner. Mm -hmm. Um, but then at the same time, I'm like kind of glad I'm start. I started it later, that I could. Oh, I think I could appreciate it more. Oh yeah. You know, I think I can appreciate like when when good things are happening mm -hmm. and stuff. That I can appreciate that more. And I don't think knowing myself, knowing like who I was when I was in my twenties, like teens and twenties, I would have probably taken it for granted. And just being young, you know, just being young, uh, I might not have understood what was happening yeah um, so they're like 
pros and cons and some, yeah, you know, you think, you think about it, but uh, as my father used to say, like everything in its time. Yeah. Everything Just as far as time. getting books on shows, if you've been in it for that long, you pretty well are a shoe in to, to get on shows. If you've been in it for 30 years, then, mm -hmm. you know, they're not going to ignore you too much. If you've been right. in it for that long. <laughs> yes yes if you've been doing it for a while and yeah. yeah and and you ask to you know you inquire about being on a show yeah they'll put you on sort of thing, yeah you know, so there's, there's an advantage to being in it for a long time <laughs> you yeah. have to say that <laughs> exactly exactly like i know on like the little online show i was doing during the pandemic somebody i don't know to say who but somebody yeah. who i used to watch like 30 35 years ago asked me for a spot and I was like yes you can have a spot <laughs> yeah, absolutely oh, you know and then he and he was real he was really nice and he was like well like during the show he was like how much time do I have I was like do as much time as you want like <laughs> you know <laughs> I'm not gonna let you <laughs> just you stop when you're ready to stop <laughs> like this I'm not gonna let you <laughs> go <laughs> fill your boots you know <laughs> like it was a treat for us you know because yeah you know you yeah, see I a pro it. just rip it up like that you know and yeah so I was like, I'm so not lighting him. You know, so I'm not bad. limiting him to eight minutes. Like, you do, yeah. you do whatever he wants. Like, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, do you have uh, like, who are your favorites to to watch or? Oh uh, well, I like. Um, to be honest, I want to support uh, Canadian uh, entertainment and comedy and not just that i mean i'm i also do uh put music musicians on shows as well okay i do a lot of variety shows but uh and uh basically i uh, i want to support canadian uh entertainers yeah that's cool. so you know uh, i'm not so much interested in i don't follow american comics and really or or out of like european or whatever okay so mainly interested in provinces or their entertainers and uh I like it like that. And I don't know. Yeah. So who are your favorite uh, Canadian comics then? Yeah, I like Derek Seguin a lot. I think he's oh, yeah. Nice. I worked with him on Friday. I love him. He's yeah, really? brilliant. Yeah. yeah, he's yeah. I've worked with him a few times, but I worked with him on Friday in Montreal. Yeah, oh, always yeah. a hoot. He's always so, sure. so good. Do so, you know Erica so... Sigurdsson? Pardon me? Do you know Erica Sigurdsson? I know the pretty name. Pretty never, I've never, so. never met. She lives here. I worked yeah. with her once. Okay. She's pretty. I know the name, but I've, I've never, I've never, I've never yeah. um, met her. Oh yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, awesome. see, Sophie Buttle was on my show. Do you know her, Sophie Buttle? She won a Juno. Yes, I, I don't yeah. know her personally because she, I think she's from Ottawa. She is. She's, yeah, yeah she's right. from Ottawa, so I know her. I know her work, but. I've never met oh, her personally. Her. Okay. Yeah, I've never met her. She was already yeah, I, she had already left Ottawa when I Oh, um, yeah. when I was I when I got She might go to the States now. A lot of people just moved to LA after a while and I don't know. she did like the Tonight Show or Oh yeah, she was on one of the Yeah, within one of the last of the year shows. the last year or so she did that. Like she's very very funny. She was here yeah. um she did a show during the summer. Oh, really? I can't remember if it was the summer of 22 or summer of 21. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'd wanted to go, but I didn't. I, I wasn't able. I can't remember. I probably wasn't here or I was on another oh, yeah. show that I didn't I didn't get to uh, to go check her out. But um, yeah, I've never met her in person, but I, oh, I know yeah. I know who she is. Yeah, and she's funny. She's very funny. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Well, one time I had uh, let's see, uh, three John. Let's see, I had Jacob Samuel. I don't know if you know him. He won a Juno too. Yeah, I so know the name, but different. Ruby Sigerson, who hasn't won a Juno, and uh, <laughs> Ivan Decker, who has won a, uh, a Juno. They were all on the same show. It was a JFL preview. Oh wow! And that is uh, the most. Uh, I mean, I filled the house. It was like one of the best shows I've, I've done. Oh, and uh, it was a veteran comic that uh, MC 
Ron Godry. I don't know if you know who yes. that is. Yes, yeah. I know who that is. He's been around a long time. That's so. amazing. Talking about veteran comics. Yeah, mm-hmm. It's good to get them on there. For sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For sure, for sure. Because one of the one of the things I I love to I love to do, like if I'm not performing, I like to go to shows, and, oh, for sure, yeah. and watch. <laughs> I like to watch, and I love watching, like observing the pros, like the headliners, uh-huh. just to see how, just like what they're like, you know, how they prepare, what they do before they go on stage, and then just their just their whole process like their structure like how do do they move around the stage a lot like do they stand Uh, in one place like just how they move i i love i love that aspect i find it fascinating yeah you know um we're students all our lives you know yeah definitely (laughs) you have to keep it you have to look at it that way as well yes yes that you're never you never stop learning like you'll you'll you should i'll never get to a point where i'm like i think i know everything now (laughs) (laughs) that'll never happen yeah no matter how big you get you you always have to realize that that there's always something to learn yeah there's always more to learn or or to improve or things Mm -hmm. like that to i know i I always try to strive to get better you know to to become stronger and better and to keep learning and 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 stuff like that and then um i remember a few maybe a month ago um one of the pros i was working with was like oh i would you know i'd like to i'm into you know i can't wait to see what you can do sort of thing and i was like (gasps) this and and uh yeah gave me some really helpful 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 pointers and tips and and things after the show and i was like this is this is awesome you know so yeah. i like well you can't I really like those observe yourself i don't know if you know it's you can't observe yourself really no it's no somebody else to to look yeah. at yeah another yeah. angle and, uh, exactly exactly because like i record i record all my sets yeah. so i have like a like a, a like a visual representation because it's not the same Hearing myself on stage, like as I'm performing, is not the same as, um, like when I'm watching the video, and I know it's not the same as, say, an audience member watching it, sort of thing. So I do yeah. pick up. I've picked up on, like, say, weird ticks that I do, um, um, you know, just things like that. I know I I tend to look down. A oh, lot, and in the beginning, I used to just fiddle with the with the microphone and the cord and all kinds of stuff. So, oh. I, you know, videotaping myself has made me aware of some of those things. So, I guess you can, yeah, yeah, it helps. Yeah, it helps. But yeah, yeah but you no. can't look at yourself objectively. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> most of us are like highly critical of ourselves, you know. Yeah. Yes. highly critical of ourselves so yeah it, it's helpful if you know you have a i don't know an objective um uh party observing yeah. and and giving um feedback like that because it, it yeah it's hard to it's hard to self-assess sometimes that's right yeah yeah what was your very first uh show like my show the first show i produced you mean no, the first show the you performed, the first like the first show that you, oh. you performed. At, um, what was that like? Oh, the very first time I did stand up. Yeah. Well, I've got that on YouTube. I don't. I think. It's, oh, is it? <laughs> if you look on YouTube, I think I put that. that this is my first set. It was. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have my first set on YouTube as well. Do you? I'll have yeah. to look at that. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll subscribe to your channel too. I don't think I have. So okay. anyway, <laughs> um, it was the showcase for the class I was in. Mine too. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, yeah. Are you also into this? I did it. Yeah, I did a class with Absolute Comedy. Oh. It was a oh. six-week course, and at the end, it was like a it was a show for it was yeah. at the club and good. friends and family, and that was yeah. my first. Oh yeah. My first show, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they actually sent me the tape. I didn't record it myself. We all got it. The tape. Oh, they recorded it for you. Nice, yeah. Yeah. nice, yeah. nice. Because yeah, one yeah. of the one of the guys in in my class had his camera set up 
Oh, um, and he recorded the entire show, and then I gave one of my friends my phone to uh, record it. So I have, I have his recording, and then I have the what I ha what's on YouTube is the one that my friend recorded with my phone. So, I see. Oh, okay. Like, I remember being so too. proud of it. Well, I'm still proud of it because that was like my first time, but it's I'm like okay, I've improved. I've gotten better. <laughs> yeah, it <can't> <laughs> over it. Uh... It but went over one, really well. It yeah. went over the it was it went over well. Um but I know the difference between like if I were to do that set today, I would tighten it up a lot more. Just oh. cause just because I have more I have more experience and I have more knowledge now. Like right. I would have tightened it, you know, tightened it up. But but I've gone back and I've taken some joke some of the jokes that I wrote in that class and have yeah. revisited them and Rework oh, them and I use some of them now. Yeah, that's the beautiful thing. You all any of your material you have forever. You yeah. can always look and exactly. redo it when you like to. Yeah, like uh, I've, I've, I've combined yeah. some. I've I've yeah. broken some up and yeah, because it's your stuff. You can do whatever you want with it. Yeah, you can yeah. stretch it. Also, I've learned how to stretch jokes. Yes, You're, you yes. got one, but you work around it and you build it up a bit and uh, exactly uh, yeah, depending on what kind of show you're doing and then and the yeah. like if you're doing six minutes or you're doing 20 minutes you could yeah. have the same base you could have that base set and yeah. if you're doing 20 minutes it's like okay i'm gonna do the expanded version of this bit and the yeah, expanded version of that yeah throw in a couple of things yeah but also yeah. there's uh, you'll go uh, sometimes I go into a show and there'll be a theme happening which I didn't realize or you know it might be an open mic or even even book shows where there and uh, you're thinking well I should do something along the same theme and if you've done something that look, I've gone to a show where I've I've planned to do something and I've ended up doing something totally different yeah. than what I told <laughs> that's happened <laughs> to me too not yeah. often but that's happened to yeah. me too I know oh, really? I yeah. think it was. Yeah, it was early on, maybe within within my first year. It was pre pandemic, and okay. I went to do I went to an open mic, and I was going to do this set, but then right. like Valentine's Day was coming up, and people were doing like Valentine's Day themed things, and I was prepping for a show that I was doing on Valentine's Day, and then I ended huh. up just revamping everything and doing like a totally different set doing <laughs> yeah yeah doing a different set than i had planned on you know yeah yeah. yeah yeah and that and that happens not for not for like a whole set but uh you know if you're at a show and you're 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 in the audience or you're nearby where you can hear what the crowds are laughing at and stuff and you're like oh okay maybe i can swap mm -hmm. this bit in with this one or i can throw this one in or i'll take that one out because they're not laughing at X Y Z jokes, I'll take that one out and put this one in. Yeah, uh -huh. it's it's always moving pieces. I find something along the same lines. Um, if you if I go to a show, I want to be there from the start and listen to everything that's being said. Me too. If, Me too. If I come in halfway through, I might make a fool of myself. You know, mm -hmm. saying something I didn't know somebody else had said already, yes. or something like. That. Yes. So. I, yeah, because I you've probably witnessed this where, um, you know whether it's the host or somebody early on is interacting with the crowd. At like, where do you like? Are you two together? How long have you been together? Where do you work? And then somebody who you can tell wasn't in the room and comes in and asks yeah. the same people the same yeah. thing, and it's like, dude, That's you weren't right. even in the room. And I, I was it. listening to a podcast. I was listening to a podcast with, with. Mark Norman and Sam Morrill, and I can't remember who their guest was, but they were mm -hmm. talking about that. And Sam Morrill said that he was at a show where, because they were talking about whether they like to stay in the room or hear what's going on or, or not. And they all said they like to be in the room to hear like what people oh. are laughing at and what other people are saying and stuff like this. And some guy had gone on stage who hadn't been in and yeah. started with the hey what do you do what's your name and somebody in the audience said he's a doctor they've been married for 10 years i'm in plumbing can we have some jokes now <laughs> <laughs> just shut it down because it might have been like the fourth or fifth time they'd been asked yeah, really. that and this yeah. guy was like enough you yeah. know 
they're well, together. Yeah. He's a teacher. I'm this. Let's get. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's rude to the audience, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! But yeah. I know. I always feel. Um, I like to be, if not in the room, at least where I can hear it. Oh, okay. You know, because yeah. depending Good. on some venues, you could be like downstairs or across the hall or somewhere Ooh. like away from the from the room, and you don't you, you don't see or hear what's happening. Oh yeah. yeah. And I feel very disconnected at that point. Oh yeah. really? Some rooms you like that you have to wait in a wait in a green room where you don't hear what's going on. Yeah, we'll say like like um like a theater show like the show one of the shows I did, the the show I did on Saturday like the green room is in the basement. Oh really? It's a very oh. it was a very tiny theater, but the green room is in the basement, uh -huh. and so you can't hear yeah. what's what's going on. So I remember I got a stool and I sat off stage, but I just sat oh. like in a corner off off stage just so I could hear. Oh yeah, I see. You know, no, that's important. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think I think it's important. I think it's important. Like I like to uh, I like to watch the other. It's not it, and it's not just to hear what the audience is like it's i want to i want to enjoy the other comics as well yeah that as well yeah. i want to watch what they're doing and see what they're what they've come up with and stuff like that too you know well all com all comics are audience too right we're right all, we're yeah all we're all consumers <laughs> we're all consumers and fans as well it's true it's true and it's like i know especially if you're in your own market um like I, I've, I've, like most of the active comics in Ottawa, I know their stuff because I've been around them for years and I hear their stuff all the time. But like, if I go to my, but I still want to, I still want to be in the room when they're performing. Yeah. I still want to hear it, you know. But yeah. I know if I'm, if I'm in like Montreal or Toronto, these are people I, I either I've never seen or I see once in a while. Like I want, I want to, I want to, I want to enjoy it. I want to yeah. partake, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah 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 i always enjoy it even if i've heard it uh 20 times before i still like it yeah same same <laughs> like there's some bits that people have that slightly you know, different whether i hear it yeah yeah because there are a couple well, there are a few comics same. here if i hear i've heard there i've heard the particular bit maybe a hundred times and it just it cracks me up every single time because it's a good bit you know it's it's enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you do you like it when you're like with friends and fat? Do you like to have friends and family in the audience? Uh, well, just for the reason that I want more people. I I don't like empty rooms very much. Right, so right. People wouldn't. So for that reason, I would. But it doesn't matter to me too much who it is. Okay. Uh, whether it's, I mean, friends and family are welcome, and I do appreciate support when it happens. Mm -hmm, for sure, for sure. I've but discovered <laughs> that I like having them there, but I can't see them. I don't want to see oh, them. You can't see them all, yeah. yeah, I don't want them right in the front. <laughs> I don't want no. to be able to see them. They have to be like in the shadows <laughs> or something. Oh, I <laughs> but yeah, I, I like the support. I like the support mm -hmm. and. Yeah, you. I want as many bums and seats as possible. But like, if it's friends and family, I don't want to see you. Do, uh, <laughs> I don't really like when when I'm on a show that I have to bring someone. Like, I don't. Oh yeah, really yeah. Something. I've never had a show like I try to. I I promote the shows that I'm on, and I try to get people out. But I've never been on a show, and I don't think they run shows like that here in Ottawa, where oh, okay. you can get if you. For a spot, you have to bring five people. I don't think they run shows like that here. I uh, was one on, on one in Montreal where it was called the Open Mic, smallest Open Mic. Oh and yes, they, I've never, I haven't been know, on that one, but I've heard it. Heard they it. want me to bring two friends, otherwise oh. they're they're not happy with you. And really? I realized later that because I was an out of towner, I could have not done it. They, they would have understood. But I did. Yeah, bring like two how are you supposed to bring there. people if you're not from there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I realized later that they would have understood that, but I didn't understand it at the time. And I did bring two friends that I knew in Montreal. And it was quite a problem to get them there, but I managed to do it. Oh, wow. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. 
Yeah. So at least, you know, I, I realize it's for the room. They're, they're trying to get business for the room in order yeah. to stay. But yeah. um, it's not always going to be easy for people to do that. Right, right. Because especially like with our with their friends, like our friends try to want to support us, but they can't come to every single show we do. Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't think they run bringer shows here, but I know it's appreciated when you bring people, oh, yeah. you know, it's appreciated. Like I always try to, I always promote it and try to get people to come out, you know, but mm -hmm. I've, I've never, I know like in, I've heard that in, in LA, in LA and in New York city, there are shows like that. Well, you, really, to get really a spot, awesome. you have to bring like five people or something, oh, right. yeah. you know. Um, but I've I've never experienced. I've never experienced. Well, here they have one where um, it's Susie's show. So if you bring, I think four people, you you're guaranteed a spot. Oh, which okay. is well, I can see that, but it's not that you have to. Okay. Like there will be a lotto otherwise, and you mm -hmm. might get it. But oh, I see. I see. Yeah. So if you bring four people. You, then you're, you're not, for you're, sure. You're, you're, yeah, you're not in the lotto. You're not in. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Okay, that's cool. That's okay, yeah, that's cool. You can see that. That's cool. Yeah, because I under you know the thing is I understand people wanting to have, um, like a, not a not a not empty room. You know how. Oh, yeah, uh, you have patrons. to support. I get that for sure. Ways. I get that for yeah. sure. So many times there will be a show running and then all of a sudden the owners doesn't want it anymore and there's no notice or anything yeah Just, oh, we don't want it anymore yeah sometimes no reason given mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> i see i just saw it happen here just just the other day it happens all the time oh wow. you, you never know but gloves are, yeah. are they come and they go and it's like the wind <laughs> it's, oh wow even gloves you expect to last a long time are all of a sudden not there and <laughs> yeah, yeah that's the know. thing that's the thing you know, because I think the closest I came to, uh, there was a show, this was in Toronto, and this was a tiny, a tiny club, and I was doing an early and a late show, and the mm -hmm. early show, I know half the people, I, I used to live in Toronto, so I have a lot of people there, and so half the yeah. audience would were people I knew, uh -huh. and then we had a later show after, and at like, let's show this show, let's say the show is supposed to start at 10. It was like 10 after 10 and nobody was there. Oh. And the owner nobody was like, okay. Was perform was there, you mean? Or? Everyone who was going to perform was there, but there was no oh. audience. Oh, I see. No okay. audience had come. And this was like 10 minutes after the show was about to start. And then oh. I think, and the owner was like, okay, well, we'll give it a few more minutes. And if nobody shows, we'll call it a night. And it was like, maybe two minutes later, these three guys came in. And we're like, okay, show's back on. And so it was just the three of them. They were good sports because we were all focused on them. Yeah. <laughs> sort of thing. It ended sure. up being a lot of fun. You yeah, know, and I've they were and they were good sports about it, you know. And uh you it's just know, not but, very comfortable for the owner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. There were just only three three people, but you know, they came in, we're like, Yeah, we'll give them a show. And uh they were good sports, and it ended up being a lot of fun. It ended up being being a lot of fun you know so yeah, yeah i'm sure it was. Yeah, yeah so there are all kinds of similar kind of thing happened to me too yeah yeah to solve a sudden the crowd comes in from the street and which is good oh yeah because what you... oh yeah that happened um is it last week maybe maybe two weeks ago um at one of the clubs the, the wednesday night is usually quiet mm -hmm. um and I think it was maybe five so at one point we thought okay it's just like maybe a dozen people and then the comics and yes. like five minutes to eight o'clock like 15 people came in oh yeah. yeah and we thought they were all together but it was like two or three groups of people that just okay. came in and we ended up having like an almost full an almost oh, yeah. full show That's so we were like oh hey people yeah <laughs> you know so yeah stuff like that it it you know it happens it's some that somebody's like oh hey here's a club like let's go in and you know the yeah. they come in just in time and uh changes the whole dynamic of of the evening yeah you know so that's that's always cool that's always cool and yeah there's so many moving parts 
in terms of because uh, I I you probably hear this a lot where people think that it's that we're talking off the top of our heads that we're just oh. like ah that it's not oh. prepared and it's very loose no. and everything. When, Never heard that. No, <laughs> no, I've heard that where people because people have the impression that we just get up there and talk off the top of our heads. They don't realize that we prepare a lot. You know, we do yeah. writing there and preparing is, uh, and rehearsing. There's a whole process and stuff like that. It is the ad bit part of it, though. I mean, it's not Shakespearean <laughs> acting. You know, I mean, it's right. not, you know what I mean? It's not a, a 100% script. It is, you have to yes. go with what, if there's hecklers or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, you've got to deal with what's happening in the room. But yeah. the thing is, you don't usually go up there with, oh, yeah, yeah, I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. Like, you at least yeah. have like most a guideline of what most people do. <laughs> least, I think some people, you know, women, some people do just get up there, but yeah, yeah, you, yeah, some people, people do wing it. But, but what I find fascinating is that, like, when it's done well, it looks effortless. It looks like, yeah, we're just talking. Oh, yeah, you I know? see. Yeah, it, look, it looks effortless. When it's done well, it looks effortless. But I find it's very, very precise. Because even though it gives the illusion of like, oh, yeah, this is cool people getting up on stage and being really easygoing and making us laugh. When you think of the structure of a comedy show, like, say, every comic has a set amount of time. Like, you don't, don't go over that block of time, yeah. you know? And then each person has their block of time within a block of time because the show is like an hour and a half. Right. Starts at eight, boom, 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 done at 9.30 sort of yeah. thing. But within it, it looks very, you know, and I, I just it's find that good. that juxtapos juxtaposition, I guess that, I don't think that's the right oh. word, but just that yeah. that blend of rigid and, and loose is fascinating for me. Yeah. You it's know. also the uh, the issue of whether people have cards in their hand. Sometimes yes. you see at high levels, people are still carrying cards. Yeah. I, mean, I don't, you know, have a problem with it as being a performer, but I can see maybe the audience might think uh, if they pay to see a show, um, you know, it yeah. doesn't look too professional sometimes. Right. Because I I, I'm not opposed to having stuff there because like I've had my phone there, but I'm not looking at my phone the whole time. My phone is there. Yeah. Just right. in case, because it's happened yeah. where I've gone blank oh. and it's just, I could just do a quick glance and like, okay. But yeah. to be like, I know when I first started, I used to go up with like a piece of paper oh. and I'd have it in my hands, but I had a yeah. piece of paper and I was looking at it and then I, I didn't, I wasn't comfortable with that. And then I just moved to, yeah. you know, a piece of paper on the. There's a screen there. ways you can do it. We, we can have uh, maybe like notes in your hand or Yeah, or like I write, I usually write words oh, really? on my on my arm yeah 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 so I, ha I have my phone there but then i also you know depending um yeah. i might jot like keywords on my arm or something just yeah just little tricks to uh it's not terrible how we remember I, it almost every you know i don't know there always seems to be something that i forget you know yes, maybe not yes thing, but, <laughs> no i yes. would have liked to have said that and, yeah i should of, have said this you know, I don't know. Because the not too long ago, I um I was doing 20 minutes and I have I had a set that I knew it it was 20 minutes. And I got yeah. off and looked at my looked at my timer and it was something like 17 and a half. And I was like, oh, yeah. how was it 17 and a half? Like I I wasn't rushing or anything. And then when I watched the video, well, I, not, I didn't watch the video yet, but when I listened to the audio. I'd skipped like on two bits. I just jumped over. Yeah, yeah. You know, like say, say one bit had five parts. I did three and then jumped over and went to another yeah. bit. And then another bit had four parts and I did one part of it. So that's where the two, the two and a half minutes went. And I was like, ha. and it was some, it was, it was a bit that it wasn't say, oh, it's a new bit. I forgot sort of thing. It's stuff I've, stuff I've, should have known, but it happened. It's happened to me too. Yeah, it's happened yeah, to so it happened. Times. What it is. And then one yeah. time I did another bit that usually gets like a really good, a good pop, and it got like a eh, like a lackluster one. And yeah. I was like, 
it like as I kept going, but in my head I was like, why didn't that they didn't react how they usually react again when I listened to it later? I left out a key word of the punchline. <laughs> so they were just like Yeah, that's you know right. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's happened to me too. Yeah. It's like <laughs> you know, I, you didn't, I didn't present it the right way. Not yeah, exactly. Mind. I didn't pres I didn't set it up right because either yeah, it's either I left out like a key a key word in the setup. So the punchline and they're like, oh, you know, you know, cause you left out a key, yeah, <laughs> something key or you mess up the punch. Yeah. It's either something with the setup, you miss something in the setup or you miss something in the punchline. And so the audience is like, yeah, I think okay. this is an issue with every comic has this. Yeah. It's always, no one has a hundred percent. penalty. Right? No. So that yeah. issue is always going to be there. Exactly. And, and no joke, you, you, you never do, even though you do the, you could do the same joke, like yeah. two shows in a row, you're not going to say it the same way. No. Uh, well, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. With a song, you can never play it the same way twice. Yeah. It's not possible. It's no. the same with the joke. Yeah. You know, you every evening is going to be different. It's yeah. Even if you use exactly the same words, yeah. You're going to have inflections, different places, because the, right. the, your surroundings could be, you're, you're doing it in front of a different crowd. You know, how you're feeling could be different. It, there's so many yeah. things that could affect it, even if you're saying exactly the same yeah. words. Oh, it's going to be different every time. It's going to be sure. different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. That's so funny. So would you like to play my silly game that I call silly questions? Yeah, well, let's do it. <laughs> okay, so... So we'll probably do like three questions and I'm going to ask you to pick a number between one and 249. I used to have 250 questions and I deleted one and I haven't replaced it yet. Okay. So, yeah. So if you could choose a number between one and 249 and I'll read the corresponding question. Let's go, let's go with route 66. 66. What would you rather do? Perform in a circus or in an aquatic dance group? Oh, a circus for sure. Circus, yeah. <laughs> aquatic dance, yeah, yeah. Uh, me and water don't get along too much. I don't like them. circus. I, I can had swim, but doing all the flippy flip things in the water, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be That's more okay. useful in the circus. <laughs> 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 all right, another another number, please. Okay, uh, let's see, uh, 123. 123. What personality trait has gotten you in the most trouble? Sort of, uh, I have a sort of intellectual nerdy side and that doesn't always go over too well. When I'm performing, <laughs> it's not usually that kind of audience, so. Okay, <laughs> all right. That's what I have to say. <laughs> okay. Your nerdiness has gone. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Just move people over to work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And one more. All right. Uh, 77. 77. Would you rather die in 20 years with no regrets or die in 50 years with many regrets? Oh. Yeah, no, I'd have to say 20 years with no regrets. I, I don't want to die with regrets. I don't like that idea. Yeah, same. Same. I also and, don't want to die in 20 years. But <laughs> I, know well, what you, I know what you mean. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think, um, yeah, I think leave dying with regrets would be sad. Would be old. Plus, uh, we're at the age where we don't have to worry about that too much. I mean, yeah. I, I'm in my 50s as well. So, yeah. Yeah. So maybe yeah. I only have 20 years, but, but yeah, I know. They're not, yeah, they'll be very. My aim is to have no regrets. Yeah, I think that's more yeah. important. My goal, is, my goal is to have no regrets. Okay, let's do one more to, to oh, okay. a little levity. <laughs> that okay. was a dark one to end on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Here, I found, I found it. I found yeah. one that'll be. Okay. okay. Would you rather fight? This is question one fifty seven. All right. Would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? 
Duck sized horses or one horse yeah. size? Uh, 100 duck sized horses or one? I think one horse sized duck because I'd rather fight a duck than a horse, even if it's big. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take my chances with the giant <laughs> duck. Yeah. Versus, because, yeah, to fight a hundred of anything would yeah. be, no, no matter how little they are. Well, that's that's why wolves can take a bear, is because they're in the pack. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's the reason. Yeah, so, I think a hundred yeah. little horses would mess you up big time. Uh, uh, <laughs> but I'll, like, square <laughs> off with a giant duck. Yeah. <laughs> well, it would be more like a goose. And those, those geese are not afraid of people. Oh, they're not afraid of anything. They're vicious. Oh, like, this. They look very <laughs> elegant and fun, but they're vicious. Yeah. My least favorite bird of all birds, for sure. <laughs> yeah, geese are yeah, geese are nasty. <laughs> they're, they're mean. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm glad it's not... I was going to get mad if it was our national bird. But we're <laughs> one of the few countries that does not have a national bird. Oh, we don't... Yeah, we don't... No. Yeah, because our national countries. animal is the beaver. Yeah, but we don't have a national bird. It's, it's, oh, we're it's one not of a loon? Countries. Not no, a loon? It's not. It's not. Oh. No. Okay. That's what, that's what uh, I looked up, anyways. Well, I'm glad. That, yeah. If I'm it glad was it's a, not a goose. goose <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> these mean <laughs> geese. <laughs> yeah. I want these mean geese representing us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well steve thank you so much for taking the time thank to talk so with me it today yeah it uh -huh. was a pleasure to have you here and uh i will have your 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 social media information in the show notes thank you for your time i appreciate uh yeah, taking the time to talk to me today this yeah. is a lot of fun and i hope I hope I meet you at some oh, point I, I, when I, I, uh, you I, I, come out I, east or I, I head out west. <laughs> oh, yeah. Please, if you come out here, please uh, let me know. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I will. And if you come to Ottawa, you let me know as well. Okay. Yeah, I will. For okay. Sure. Well, thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for watching. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.